Granger Larne of Boston National Historical Park. Today, we'll take a deeper look at the colonial militiamen who fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill. The young men and old men, African American, white, Native American, who fought together on the battlefield, united by their service and sacrifice in causes, including freedom and liberty. Here are five things you should know about the diversity of the colonial soldier at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Many of the colonial militiamen who fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill were raised in an era of revolution. They grew up in the decade leading up to the outbreak of war and had their political views shaped by events including the Boston Massacre, the destruction of the tea, and the frequent protests against parliamentary taxation and the presence of British soldiers in the city streets. Earnest in their belief in the cause of liberty, many joined their town militias, including young Peter Brown, who was just 21 years old when he stepped foot on this battlefield. Brown later recalled, I did not know what I could do better than to enlist. Therefore, being heart in the cause, I did it directly. The savagery of the battle and the casualties he witnessed shocked Brown to his core. Nevertheless, he later wrote home to his mother, if we should be called again to action, I hope to have the courage and strength to act my part valiantly in defense of our liberties and country. One of the oldest men to serve at the Battle of Bunker Hill was gunsmith Seth Pomeroy. Pomeroy was nearly 70 years old when he stood on the battlefield, clutching a homemade musket he had carried since his service in King George's War 30 years prior. Pomeroy had grown up in a generation vastly different from young Peter Brown's. He was among the older men who had once served loyally under the British flag in the French and Indian War but now chose to stand on the opposite side of the battlefield. When the fighting moved south from Massachusetts the following year, 70-year-old Pomeroy could have stayed home, but instead he chose to continue to serve. Pomeroy died in winter 1777 in New York while answering George Washington's call for troops to meet him in New Jersey. A week before his death, he wrote home to his family regarding his devotion to duty. Those words are now inscribed on New York's Seth Pomeroy Monument. I go cheerfully, for I am sure the cause we are engaged in is just, and the call I have to it is clear, and the call of God. With that assurance, who would not go on cheerfully and confront every danger? African Americans, both free and enslaved, fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill as members of what was to be the last fully integrated American army for the next 175 years until the Korean War in 1950. Records show that over 100 men of color fought at Bunker Hill, including Salem Poor. Born enslaved, Poor purchased his freedom in 1769. Six years later, he joined the Massachusetts militia. Poor's regiment was among those sent to fortify Bunker Hill on the evening of June 16, 1775. At the battle the next afternoon, Salem Poor defended the Colonial Redoubt, here on Breed's Hill. Poor's heroic actions were recognized by the Colonial officers he fought alongside that day. Fourteen officers, including Colonel William Prescott, signed a petition to the Massachusetts General Court, which was later passed along to George Washington. The petition stated that Poor behaved like an experienced officer and was a brave and gallant soldier. During the American Revolution, Southern Connecticut's Mohegan tribe sided with the colonists. Tribal historians have found that eight Mohegan men answered the call for volunteers in 1775 and fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill. One of those volunteers was 29-year-old Samuel Ashbow, who left his wife and young child behind to enlist in Colonel Israel Putnam's Connecticut Regiment. At the Battle of Bunker Hill, Ashbow and the Connecticut men fortified and took position behind a wooden and stone rail fence to the left of the hill. 
they played a pivotal role in protecting the colonial left flank, twice beating back assaults by British General William Howe. On Howe's third assault, he succeeded in overwhelming the colonial militiamen. Ashbow's company was one of several who bravely covered the colonial retreat. Samuel Ashbow died on the battlefield at Bunker Hill, making him the first Native American to sacrifice his life for the American Revolution. Here in Winthrop Square, a block away from the Bunker Hill Monument, we find these memorial tablets, which commemorate the men who lost their lives at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Next to each man's name is the New England town he hailed from. But here, we just see a line. Thomas Doyle of Samuel Garish's Massachusetts Regiment. In the records of the colonial dead, where his hometown should be listed, we just see a single phrase, a deserter from the King's troops. Now Thomas Doyle's surname suggests that he was most likely Irish born, as many were in the 18th century British army. Some Irishmen were coerced into joining the army. Others saw it as an opportunity to escape poverty and earn a wage. Whatever Thomas Doyle's reasons were for joining the British Army, what was it about the colonial militiamen that he was willing to switch sides and risk his life for? After all, had he survived the battle and later been captured, Thomas Doyle most certainly would have been hanged for deserting and aiding the enemy. Doyle's actions tell us that he found New England's fight for liberty worthy of his service and sacrifice. At the Battle of Bunker Hill, these men were fighting for causes, including freedom and liberty. To truly appreciate each soldier's service and sacrifice, we ask ourselves, how are their definitions of liberty and freedom different? And how are they the same? At the Bunker Hill Monument, we honor each soldier's service and sacrifice as we continue to expand upon our definitions of liberty and freedom in a much more diverse America today. Thank you for joining me for five things you should know about the diversity of the colonial soldier at the Battle of Bunker Hill.